Dear students, Assalamu Alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to learn about logic gates. At first, let's learn a bit about binary logic. Binary logic consists of binary variables and logical operations. Variables are usually designated by alphabets such as A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, etc. But they can only have two possible values, 0 or 1. Since we are talking about binary logic, so there will definitely be some logical operations. These operations include AND, OR, NOT, etc. Now, let's talk about the code topic here, logic gates. The most basic digital devices are called gates. A gate has one or more inputs and produces an output that is a function of the current input values. That means the output will completely depend upon what the input is. The relationship between the input and output is based on a certain logical function. This is the logic that we talked about in the previous slide. And or not etc. So these are the logics that we are talking about here. There can be different types of logic gates in digital logic design. These are some of the examples that we are going to learn within a few moments. At first, let's talk about the most important logic gates. Here we can see three different gates and or not. These gates are also called basic gates. These are called basic gates because whatever we want to build will have to use any of these three gates. That's why these are called basic gates. These are the most fundamental types of gates in digital logic design. Before going into further details, let's talk about a different thing, truth table. Truth table is a table that provides a listing of every possible combination of inputs and its corresponding outputs. Here you can see a possible example of a truth table. We'll see more detailed example in the upcoming slides. Now let's talk about a two input AND gate. Here we can see the truth table for a two input AND gate. There are two different inputs A and B. Since there are two inputs, so there will be four possible combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And here we can see the output. You can see that the output is written as A dot B. This dot indicates that we are implementing an AND gate here. So dot is the sign for an AND gate. In case of truth table, 1 indicates on and 0 indicates off. And here is the rule for a simple AND gate. Output will be 1 only when both inputs are 1. At the first row, we can see that both of the inputs are 0. Since both of them are 0, so output will definitely be 0. At the second row, we can see one input is 0 and the other is 1. This time, the output is 0 again because we saw that output can only be 1 when both inputs are 1. At the third row, we can see one input is 1 and other one is 0 so output is 0 again but at the final step we can see that both of the inputs are 1 since both of the inputs are 1 the output will be 1 this time this is the general figure for a two input AND gate so there are two inputs a and b and the output will be a dot b we'll have to learn this figure very well because it will be very much needed for our future lectures now let's talk about a two input or gate this is the truth table. It's similar as the two input AND gates truth table. And there's the same rule, 1 for ON and 0 for OFF. Here we have two inputs A and B. Since there are two inputs, so there will be four different combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And here at the output, we can see that the symbol is a plus sign. But you have to remember that this plus sign does not in any way indicate an addition operation. That means it is not indicating that we are adding A and B. It indicates OR gate. Alright, so plus sign is the symbol for an OR gate. Now let's check the rules. The rules say output will be 1 only when at least one input is 1. At the first row we can see both of the inputs are 0 so output is definitely 0. At the second row we can see that one input is 0 and the other input is 1. So at the output, the value will be 1 because we saw the rule is the output will be 1 only when at least one input is 1. Now at the third row, we can see A is 1 and B is 0. So the output will be 1 again. And at the final step, we can see 
that a and b both are one now at the rule we saw that this word is very much important at least one but here at the last step we can see both of the inputs are one so the output will definitely be one because we learned that at least one input is one then the output will be one so this satisfies that rule so that's why the output is one again and this is the symbol for a two input or gate we have to learn this symbol very well because we need it in future lectures let's talk about the not gate here is the truth table for a not gate you can see the difference from previous gates here we have only one input and one output because if you see the symbol we can see that what not gate does is it takes an input and then it outputs the complete inverse of that input so if we input 0 then the output will be 1 if we input 1 then the output will be 0 that's it this is probably the easiest gate in digital logic design so the rule is very simple output will always be the inverse of the input so there are two symbols here this is number 1 and this is number 2 both of the symbols are correct for a NOT gate you can learn any of the symbol but I suggest learning the first one there are some other types of gates in digital logic design too these are not known as basic gates we can see that these gates are NAND, NOR, XOR and XNOR now NAND and NOR are usually known as universal gates we'll talk about it a few minutes later and XOR and XNOR these are actually called arithmetic gates at first let's talk about a two input XOR gate here we can see at the truth table as usual there are two inputs A and B so four possible combinations and just take a look at this symbol this is a different symbol from the previous ones this is not a plus sign this is basically a plus sign and a circular shape around that so this is the symbol for XOR gate all right so let's check the rules output will be one only when both inputs are different so check the rule very carefully here at the first row we can see both of the inputs are zero and the output is exactly zero at the second step we can see one input is zero and other input is one and we learned that output will be one only when both inputs are different we can see that at this row the second row one input is 0 and the other input is 1 so these are different values that's why output is 1 at the third row one input is 1 and the other input is 0 so the output is 1 again but at the fourth row we can see that both the inputs are 1 so these inputs are not different they're the same thing that's why the output is not 1 this time it is given as 0 and this is the symbol for a two input XOR gate so A and B two inputs and finally A X or B now let's talk about two input XNOR gate here we can see from the truth table there are two possible inputs and four possible combinations let's check the rules output will be one only when both inputs are the same all right output will be one only when both inputs are same at the first row we can see 0 and 0 both inputs are same so that's why output will be 1 at the second row one input is 0 other is 1 so they are different so output is 0 third row is the same and at the fourth row we can see both of the inputs are 1 since both, since both of them are the same thing so that's why the output is 1 this time and you can check that it is actually the inverse of XOR so this is XNOR previously we understood uh, XOR gate all right so this is XNOR XNOR is actually the inverse of XOR all right so uh, here we can see the symbol which indicates the XNOR sign this is the symbol for XNOR gate and this is the diagram for uh, XNOR gate so we'll have to learn this because we'll need it in future lecture sizes now let's talk about universal gates a universal gate is a gate which can implement any type of gates that means using a universal gate we can build AND gate OR gate NOT gate or any type of gates there are two universal gates NAND and NOR now let's talk about a simple two input NAND gate 
we can see from the truth table that there are two different inputs A and B and we can check the symbol here it indicates A and B but here we can see a prime sign which is making it inverse of the AND gate from the figure here uh, from the uh, name here we can see that it is called NAND this N here indicates NOT alright so this N here indicates NOT that means NOT AND so that's why there is a prime sign uh, at the outside of these uh, two brackets here which is indicating that this is actually the inverse of AND so let's check the rules so this is basically the inverse of AND so uh, at the first row the inputs are 0 and 0 in case of AND gate the output would have been 0 but since this is the inverse of AND gate so the output is 1 at the second row for 0 and 1 the output is 1 third row for 1 and 0 the output is 1 again but at the fourth row for 1 and 1 the uh, output of a simple AND gate would have been 1 but since this is the inverse of an AND gate so that's why the output is 0 here and this is the diagram for a simple 2 input NAND gate uh, you can see that there is an equivalent sign this indicates that this diagram is actually the same as this one uh, if you think carefully you will find out that if we can somehow build a simple AND gate and then connect it to a NOT gate then the final output will be equivalent as this one alright so uh, you can build it anyway you can use a direct NAND gate or you can build this NAND gate using a simple AND gate and a NOT gate now let's talk about a 2 input NOR gate it is basically the inverse of an OR gate here the name indicates NOR where N indicates NOT alright the N indicates NOT so that's why it's called NOT OR so in brief it's called NOR gate if we check the symbol we will see that there is a simple plus sign which is indicating that A or B but the prime sign makes it the inverse of a simple OR gate so this is the symbol for a NOR gate let's check the inputs at the first stage both of the inputs are 0 in case of OR gate the output would have been 0 but since this is a NOR gate and the output will be inverse of OR so that's why the output is 1 here at the second row one input is 0 and the other is 1 in case of OR gate this output would definitely have been 1 but since this is the case of NOR gate so that's why the output is 0 here at the third row one input is 1 and the other is 0 and the output is 0 again now at the final row we can see that both of the inputs are 1 in case of OR gate it would have been 1 at the output but since this is NOR gate and NOR is inverse of OR so that's why we have written 0 at the output